In this video, I'm going to be using the variational method to look at a couple different candidate potentials that we could use for a trial function, or uh, not potentials, but functions that we can use for a trial function for a hydrogen atom potential. All right, so remember, uh, we are using this sort of four-part method uh, where in the first one we want to guess a trial function uh, and we want to take some of these things into consideration such as symmetry, number of nodes, smoothness, and behavior at infinity. Uh, and we include the adjustable parameters which uh, we could have just one of them or you can have uh, you know, many of them. Uh, and so then the second step is we want to uh, calculate the energy uh, and so that will look like this so we have the expectation in the numerator and then the inner product in the denominator uh, and since this is normalized uh, a lot a lot of times we can use that the denominator is equal to one uh, which would give us this but uh, that won't always be the case here uh, and so we will use an expression that looks like this, as we'll see here in a minute. Then the third step is to adjust our alpha, our adjustable parameters here until our energy, and in this case energy for the ground state, is minimized with respect to these adjustable parameters. Uh, then we will find what uh, the numbers for the adjustable parameters are. We plug those back into our energy expression and we are able to calculate the upper bound on the ground state energy. And so this flow chart is kind of looking, essentially saying the same thing I talked about above. So we uh, first define the Hamiltonian and that just depends on what potential we're using. And so in this video, I'll be looking at the uh, hydrogen at nucleus potential. So we'll be using that Hamiltonian. So like I said, the first step, we define the trial function as a function of the parameters, alpha one, alpha two, so on. Uh, we evaluate the expression for the variational energy. So we uh, obtain that energy expression. Then we use that to find the minimum uh, energy and we get the uh, value of the parameters there at the lowest or, or when the derivative is equal to zero. Then we construct our trial wave function and energy with parameters. And so uh, that is step four up here where we just substitute those parameters in. Uh, so we compare with the optimized wave function and energy. So we're essentially getting, we know the energy that we're supposed to get because it's obtained experimentally. And so we are going to then compare what we calculate the energy to be. Uh, and if it's, if it's good enough, uh, which, you know, I guess that could be kind of subjective what good enough means, then you would keep that. But if it's not good enough, you might go back to the drawing board and use a different uh, test function or trial function. Uh, and so you can see this flow chart uh, at this link here, which will be in the lecture notes linked to in the description down below. All right, so the first example here, so we're using our hydrogen atom uh, and we can try a Gaussian. And so the Gaussian function, which is this alpha one times the exponential e to the minus alpha two r squared. And that will look like what we have. So I have this link to a Desmos calculator where you can sort of play around with the function. So it looks like this. And so see, I have this here, which is our Gaussian function. So you can adjust uh, the F, which would be our alpha two, and that adjusts the width of our function here. Uh, or you can adjust this, which is that coefficient out front. Uh, and so those are going to be our adjustable parameters here. All right, so this gives us this, uh, this energy uh, function right here, this energy expression here, where we see we have our Hamiltonian here in the expectation value. So next we calculate the energy. So we first need to actually calculate the second derivative of our test function right here with respect to uh, alpha. Uh, and in this case, we'll be looking at alpha two. So I could actually put 
uh, a two there uh, with respect to r in the spherical coordinates. And so that gives us this right here. So this is our this is our derivative right there. And so the Hamiltonian acting on this function would then be this right here. So this is the Hamiltonian acting on uh, this function on the second derivative of that function there. Then we multiply through by uh, the function. So we are taking the expectation value. So now it's this right here, which is the expectation value. And we end up with this uh, sort of messy looking expression right here. So we want to integrate that over all of space. Uh, so if you want to look through some of these, uh, some of this math here, you can do that on your own, but what we end up with is this right here for our our energy of the system, or at least the the uh, expectation value, because now we have to do the denominator, and so we do the same thing again. We integrate over all space, and we end up with this right here, and so we put those two together. We have here in the numerator our expectation value and then the denominator down here is our inner product uh, and so then we can just sort of flip this denominator upside down and do a multiplication like this so then we want to minimize uh, by adjusting the alpha 2 which is uh, this f here so it's the part in our exponent there that will actually be adjusting that's because the alpha 1 is just a normalization factor and so we take the derivative with respect to alpha 2, uh, which we want to have be equal to 0. So then we can sort of uh, get this in terms of, well, the square root of alpha, uh, alpha 2. Then we square everything, and we end up with this right here. And so then we actually substitute that back in. So uh, I wrote it like this, but we can actually substitute this alpha 2 back in. And we get this for our energy. So we sort of uh, adjust things around, uh, simplify, and we end up with this. And so this ends up being about minus 11.5 electron volts, uh, where the uh, actual ground state energy is this right here. So that's what we have in parentheses here. And so what that means is we're off by this factor here, this 8 over 3 pi, which is about 0.849. And so we are off by about 15% of the real ground state value of minus 13.6. And so that was looking at the variational method using, uh, using the Gaussian as our test function. So now we can do kind of the same thing again, but in this case, we're actually using this Lorentzian function, this beta over alpha squared plus r squared. And so we can actually look at that here. So we'll turn that one off, turn this back on. So b over a squared plus x squared the b and the a squared here are, are adjustable functions, so the b kind of changes the amplitude on that where, uh, where well, they both change the amplitude in this case. Uh, and so we can see that this, it's a very similar looking function to our, our Gaussian here. It's just a little bit wider, uh, well, at least when we have the alpha and the exponent of our Gaussian be equal to about 1, but we can see we can widen that out even further. Uh, but anyway, that is our Lorentzian function there, and so we'll do the same steps here uh, using the Lorentzian function. So again, we calculate or we get the energy expression here, uh, then we calculate the energy, and so if we go through all the math for that using our Lorentzian function, uh, we end up getting this for our energy. So this h bar squared over 4m alpha squared minus 2e squared over pi alpha. Uh, so we try to minimize this with respect to alpha, and when we do that, we get this alpha equals pi h bar squared over 4me squared. Uh, and just kind of a reminder, the e right here is the 
electron charge. Uh, this isn't the exponential. Uh, so that, that's a little bit um, uh, annoying that we use E for the electron charge, but also for uh, for the exponential. So uh, I know there are some places where you see the electron charge is Q. Sometimes people use Z, but the sources I was using were using E, so I just kind of uh, used that. Uh, and so what we actually see is this H bar over Me squared is actually equal to the Bohr radius. Uh, and so that is the distance uh, to the electron cloud, uh, but in this case we have this factor of pi over 4, which is equal to about 0.785, or uh, if you round, be about 0.8. Uh, and so this is about 20% smaller. The radius uh, that we calculated here is about 20% smaller. So then we substitute our alpha that we got up here back into our energy expression here. And what we find is that we get an energy that's about 11.1 .1 electron volts, which is about 19% off the exact value of minus 13.6 electron volts. Uh, and so we see that these, these two uh, trial functions here, the Gaussian and the Lorentzian function, uh, you know, are fairly close. So what you'd probably end up doing if you wanted to get closer, so if we go back up to this, is we would want to define uh, a different trial function. And we might end up putting in even more of these adjustable parameters into it to try and get something even closer. And so you can see how you might end up with some very complicated uh, some complicated trial functions, but uh, as you do this, you can keep trying to get closer and closer to the actual value. And in a future video, when I, I look at the linear variational principle, we'll actually see that uh, using a linear combination of Gaussians, of Gaussian functions, we can actually get uh, sort of arbitrarily close to the actual the actual ground state energy here for hydrogen. Uh, but anyway, uh, so these two examples here using the Gaussian and this Lorentzian, I actually got from this source here, which I do have linked to. So uh, that's this bottom link down here if you wanted to check it out. So this actually looks at several other different uh, different trial functions here. So they have this hydrogen-like atom. Uh, so the Gaussian and this another approximation for hydrogen, that is our Gaussian and our Lorentzian. But then it also goes through simple harmonic oscillator, uh, two different kinds of anharmonic oscillators. So if you wanted to look at more examples of this, then you could go ahead and do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Again, sort of the take-home message is that we're just sort of applying this four-part method here to, uh, to these different trial functions. So we're setting up these trial functions and then uh, using that four-part method for it to try and get something that uh, gets closer and closer to the actual ground state energy of hydrogen in this case. Uh, and in the next video, I'm actually going to look at uh, using this for a helium atom, which adds uh, sort of another complication because we have two electrons, and so there is uh, some other effects going on there. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.